Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmaso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me for pricing. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a 2018 model year limited edition of 288 pieces in grade 5 titanium. This is the Corum Admiral's Cup AC145 Skelet. The original Admiral's Cup debuted in 1970. 60 as a nautically themed 12-sided nautical pennant blazon sports watch for the young Corum brand and it's still bedecked with nautical pennants and the dodecagonal form of 12 sides today. The original AC145 skelet which was white accented came out in 2014. This watch was part of a trio that came out in 2018 in primary colors red, blue, and yellow of which the admiral's blue you see right here is by far the most versatile and wearable color. So now that we're up to speed historically, let's talk about the size. Grade 5 tie, polymer, and sapphire means this is a very light watch. Though it is 45 millimeters in diameter, it doesn't feel it. The watch is 13.5 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, it measures 51 millimeters with a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now note that the strap is fully integrated. There's no daylight, there's no gap. But unlike a lot of integrated straps, this one doesn't fight it doesn't flare. It doesn't want to arc out beyond your wrist. It exits vertically out of the lugs. So though it's integrated, it doesn't create the fit problems that most integrated straps do. There's striation externally. You can see it's a brand new Corum factory strap. It has a matching deployant clasp, a combination of polished and satinated steel. You close it. It's a double fold, and it's a twin trigger release. So you do have to press both triggers to open it. This is a 300-meter sports watch. It needs a secure clasp and it has that. Uh, the clasp features the double-sided key, a symbol of the city of Le Chaux de Fonds, and as you can see, the omnipresent emblem of Corum. Now, the watch wears well on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist in spite of its size. Normally, I would say for a 45, my wrist would be too small, but because of the feel, the fit, the vertical exit of the strap from the case and the light materials, this works. It's also surprisingly compatible with the cuff being relatively thin in profile. Taking a quick look at the case itself, it's surprisingly nuanced. The Admiral's Cup case has always been a remarkable one because of the dodecagon, but often that's been a feature of the dial and the bezel. Here we have a remarkable combination of different satinated and polished elements of grade 5 tie. You can see that lateral screws are inserted for this complex case assembly. It's highly layered. We have metal, we have polymer, and then we have sapphire on the top. You can see that the outermost face of the bezel is satinated. Then there is a transitional profile and polish, then vertical satination on the top. We have a crown guard, again, the key of Le Chaux de Fonds. Double road knurling for the crown. It is a screw-down crown, 300 meters water resistant. It better be a screw-down crown. And you can see that the shape of the crown guards is traced by that polymer gasket. You can also appreciate that the watch includes a remarkably complex combination of bezel, crystal, and dial, reminiscent in some ways of the first generation Roger de Bouis Sympathie, but whereas that was difficult to make 30 meters water resistant, this must have been a bear to make 300 meters water resistant, as shaped crystals tend to be very challenging in that regard. Now, you can see we have nautical pennants, one at each hour, a longtime symbol of the Admiral's Cup. We have a nickel anthracite flange that unifies the bezel with the dial base. We have a cantilever date frame as well as our indices which are steel and rhodium plated the hands are also steel and rhodium plated let's do a quick loom shot you can see there is no shortage of loom here you can see that quorum key counterweight passing over the loomed hour hand right there. Now, the movement is skeletonized and nickel anthracite coated. We also have an unusual date wheel. Rather than having double digit dates with numerals abreast, here we actually have them stacked in tandem. So you can see there's a couple of different setting modes here. One of them is hacking seconds, stop seconds, and then the other is a quick set. And so you can rapidly cycle the date and appreciate how it is backlit, though skeletonized, by that yellow panel at 6 o'clock. Now take a little look. You can see the whirlwind, that's what I call it, the whirlwind or the hurricane jumper that swaps 
the dates when you're using the quick set of a Salida SW300 or an ETA 2892. A 2892 is the basic architecture here. A Salida makes a version of the 2892 that is then modified by Corum's sister company, Eterna, which is a formidable movement manufacturer. And I know this because if you flip the watch over, you can see the historic Eterna logo inside the skeletonizations with the ball bearings surrounding the E. So because you have Eterna, and a long ago offshoot of ETA, um, Eterna is able to take that Salida base movement and heavily modify it for Corum. It's great to have friends with engineering chops. Now you can see on the dial side, everything is visible. You can see the jumper, the quick set jumper for the date wheel. You can also see the automatic jumper up at 1030, that is the jumper for the date. And you can also see adjacent the indexing spring. Now I'm going to move the hands out of the way. You can see the motion works, which includes, I'll do my best to show you this here, the large hour wheel, which is turned by the minute wheel pinion. The minute wheel below the minute wheel pinion is turned by the cannon pinion. The hour hand sits on the hour wheel, the minute hand sits on the cannon pinion, so you can see all that visible mechanism as it operates. You can also see the clutch, clutch lever, clutch spring, the winding pinion, and if you look carefully, you can also see the crown wheel of the keyless works. So all of that's been nicely finished. You can see the barrel's been opened up. You can see the coiled mainspring is a sort of unofficial eyeballing power reserve. So you can estimate from the coils of the spring how much power reserve remains. Everything's been satinated or polished or grained. It is quite attractive, though not artisanally finished. It is beautifully detailed and a lot of work went into this. Uh, you see why I think it's a Salida SW300 base because it's 26 joules, whereas a ETA 2892 would be 21. But by direction, winding, automatic, 42-hour power reserve, 4 hertz beat rate, quick set with hacking seconds, and fully skeletonized with a super attractive satination across all the bridges, and then black polishing of the regulator, for example, and the assembly screws. A very attractive watch. You can see limited edition, individually numbered, 300 meters water resistant, hypoallergenic titanium case back, a very appealing watch at a very appealing price from a little known sort of cult classic art house brand. That's how Quorum's known within the industry. A relatively modern brand in origin, but an art house that grew out of the best inclinations of its founders in the 1950s. And it remains a style statement brand today. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.